Hey everyone, this video is going to show you how to splice Govi Permanent Outdoor Lights 2. This is uh, the process to make those jumps where you don't want lights to be seen, maybe from like your first story to second story, vice versa, or anywhere you don't want lights but want to continue uh, the strand. If you like this video and it helps you out, please hit the like button. I will put links in the comments for all the extra stuff I bought um, and the tips and tricks that I learned. All right, I'll try and make this quick, down and dirty. All right, the extra wire I bought is a, looks just like a, the outer jacket looks like a coax cable, probably about the same size, if not exact. It's got three strands on it. It's got a red, a black, and a yellow. The crimper kit I bought comes with a bunch of butt splices. Um, I mainly use the blue ones. In fact, I think that's all I use, the AWG 16-14 cable size. Uh, the crimpers made it really easy. There's a little blue dot boop, and it correlates with your blue butt connector or butt splice. All right. So again, has three wires on it. Strip your wire. Don't strip it too far. And I'll show you why. These crimpers are really good because once you go down a click or two, it grabs on and doesn't the, the mouth doesn't open up, so it frees up your hand to do what I'm about to do, um, especially when you're up on a ladder or in an awkward spot. Um, don't strip it too far. You don't want the, the bare wire sticking outside the blue, which is your heat shrink. Once it's in, good. Give her a good crimp. Give it a little tug. Make sure it doesn't come out. Um, don't pull too hard because you pull too hard. Um, no matter how good it is, it's probably going to come off. All right, so that's that. That's part one. And then before you continue on, take you a little sleeve of heat shrink and put it over. It doesn't matter which side. Uh, uh, just make sure you do it before you crimp both sides and let it sit there. All right, I don't have a spare set of lights that I need to do another splice on, so I'm just going to explain how this is done. Um, versus actually putting the wire in. All right, look at Govi lights. It's got three strands on it. It's got a solid black. It's got a wire with the yellow, or not yellow, white dashes on it. And then the third wire's got like little tiny letters or numbers or words um, on it. So um, I haven't cut um, anywhere bef before the first light on a strand. I've always been somewhere like in between lights um, it should work if you start before the light. I can't say it will. I can't guarantee it. Probably will. But try to go somewhere in the middle of two lights. All right. Um, to be consistent and so you don't mess something up along the way, come up with a pattern that you're going to follow the entire way if you're making several jumps. So my pattern is uh, I take the solid black line and I splice it to the black line uh, over here on the extra wire. I use the dashed line on the Gobi side and I connect it to the yellow, and then I use the uh, word, the one with the little letters on it, I splice it to the, to the red wire. And I stay consistent the entire time. Um, that way you don't run into problems by, you know, putting the wrong wires together. Anyway, once you've crimped all that down and made the connections, slide your heat shrink that you already slid on one side evenly over uh, each wire Try to put the butt splices in the middle and take your heat gun and just go back and forth slowly on it. Twist around a little bit, you know, get good coverage um, and go all the, you know, keep going until you see the, this, um, this side, on well, both sides actually, like get real tight up against the wire jacket here. And that way it'll create a, a weatherproof seal. Do that on both sides. Um, watch out on the Govi side, um, the Govi wire side. The wire jackets are thinner and they heat up a lot quicker than these wire jackets. So be very careful. Um, I'm not positive because I haven't checked, but I've seen, uh, I've seen people say, well, do all these individually first before you do the heat shrink. Um, sure, more power to you. Um, I didn't. I believe that the the heat shrink sleeve does that job for me. In fact, the heat probably gets through that heat shrink and shrinks these as well. So uh, it just depends on how meticulous you want to be. So that's the connection sequence. That's all you have to do. Um, 
of course, before you do all this, make sure you plug your lights in and that they're all working before you start cutting. Um, that way you know that if you make a splice, after you make that splice, go check that the lights on the other side still light up on both sides. Um, if you didn't do that, if you didn't check your lights beforehand and you made your splice, plugged them in and it didn't work, you could be chasing a ghost. They might, they might not have worked to begin with. So very important first step. I should have mentioned that first, but thought it was kind of common sense is what it is. All right, so a couple other tricks I learned along the way. Uh, the clips that come with the twos, I don't know what they look like for the other um, series, the elites, the pros, all that jazz, um, look like this. The screws that they come with are absolute garbage. I would throw them in the trash before, you know, as soon as you open the box. Uh, the, the, the head on them is super small. It's difficult to, to get a, a bit in there and they're not self-tapping. I have a board and batten siding and on my uh, overhang and I was having to dry, uh, drill pilot holes to get their screws in. It was a pain in the butt. So I went and bought these other screws um, and I'll put a link to those in the in the comments. Um, so anyway, your cable just kind of fits in these two little uh, clips on the side and then the, the light put goes in the middle. There's a pro and a con to these screws. The pro is if you want to free up a hand, you can barely put it in the bracket and it's so tight that it holds and it kind of frees up your hand versus a screw that keeps falling out and you're juggling it and dropping it everywhere. So that's the pro. The con is sometimes um, when you're one handed up on top of a ladder, you know, one hand holding the ladder, the other hand holding the drill, trying to screw the screw in. It's so tight that it kind of turns if it, it turns the bracket itself. And the problem with that is it'll pop the, the wire out of the channel and then you got to reach back up there and fix it. Um, but not that huge of a deal. I like them way better than the ones that, the, uh, that Gilby gives you. Anyway, the uh, warranty talk, I don't know. I don't care if it voids the warranty or not. I called around to get a few uh, quotes on install. Uh, the cheapest one was 2,400 bucks for 300 feet. And I've seen way higher than that on uh, Facebook and you know, other platforms talking about it. Um, so you know, do it at your own risk. You're probably here because you don't care either and you just wanna get your lights up. So um, these other things that I got are called uh, coax staples and they help uh, hide you know wires that you have hanging down in different places um, it fits right over this same wire jacket um, for the extra wire I bought probably because it's the same size as the coax cable I don't know the nails come in different sizes um, I don't remember exactly which side this size this is um, but anyway helps out to hide your wires uh, on shingles around trim stuff like that um, I think that's it. Uh, again, if you like this video and it helped you out, uh, please hit the like button and all the extra stuff that I bought to make this happen will be in the comments. Thanks and have a good one.